Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's daughter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. How many of you know that your presence can actually convict people? You're on your way to John chapter 1. Your presence can actually convict people of their sin. Amen. There's a man came to my wife and says, you know why I got married? And uh, she said, no, John chapter 1. She said, no, I don't. He said, I just could not stand being around you and living with a woman and not married to her. I had to get married. You see, my wife made him feel uncomfortable when, uh, when, when he got around her because he was living with a woman and wasn't married to her. Did you know that you make people feel uncomfortable sometimes? There's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. That means that the presence of God is with you, in you, and around you. You're creating a new environment when you step into that realm. Are you okay? John chapter 1. I want to talk this morning about the authority to rule. Two things that we know little about. Two things that most believers know nothing about. The authority to rule. Notice, if you will, in John chapter 1, verse 14. I'm reading from the New King James. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was Jesus. He became flesh, came to the earth, he dwelt among us. John said, we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him, cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received Notice, grace for grace. Verse 17. For the law was given through Moses. We all know that, right? Law was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, not by the law. Grace is a person. Won't you just say that? Grace. Grace is a person. Grace came as a person named Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace is not a teaching, neither is it a doctrine, but it's a person that you can have a relationship with. Amen. How many of you know you can't have a relationship with two rocks? The, the commandments. Are, <laughs> but you can have a relationship with the person who brought grace to the earth. His name is Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 5, we've learned that there are two gifts for us to receive and two gifts for us to understand if we are going to have the authority to rule. Romans chapter 5, I'll be reading verse 17 if I can find it. That's in the New Testament, isn't it, Romans? Okay, Romans five seventeen. For by the one man's offense, that was Adam now, death rang through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and if the gift of righteousness shall ring in life through the one Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God. The word grace here is an unusual word in the Greek text. Matter of fact, it's found 201 times in, in the Bible. 201 times, so it must be something that's important to God. It's a state of kindness and favor towards someone. Thank God God showed that to us. Can you say amen? amen. Notice the word righteousness. This is the one that flipped me out. It's found 555 times in the Bible. 
555 times in the Bible. It's a state of being in a proper relationship with God. A state of being in a proper relationship with God. Notice the word ring in you. R-E-I-G-N. That's found 284 times in the Bible. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, I just know it. I'm just telling you it's found 284. It means to ring as a king. To ring as a king. How many believers do you know today who actually ring as a king? That's what you're supposed to be doing with these two gifts. Gift of abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. We know very little about those two gifts. Why don't you just tell the person beside of you, I don't really know, but I think he might be talking about you. If, if you're going to ring in life, that means that you have to know something about your authority. And your authority is something that came from God. After his resurrection, Jesus did the most amazing thing. He passed his own authority on to his followers. That means to you. See, you can have authority and not use it. You can have authority and not even know it. But if you got it, it's worth using. Can you say amen? I'll say things to you to make you think. Right now, this is one of those thoughts I have. Right now, you possess the same authority as Jesus Christ. Now you just think about that a moment. Right now, today, where you sit, you possess the same authority as Jesus Christ. Because when he resurrected, he gave that to you. That's an awesome thought, isn't it? Well, you say, why am I going through what I'm going through? It could be that you don't know that you have authority, or it could be you're not using your authority. Either one of those. You don't know you have it, or you have it, and you don't know how to use it. The authority to drive out all demons, the authority to heal the sick, the authority to claim protection from harm and harassment, that's yours. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? I mean, we're just different people. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. I am a believer. I am a follower of Jesus Christ, and so are you. So just get it settled. You're not going to feel comfortable in the world. You're not going to feel comfortable doing everything you used to do before you came to Jesus. The way Jesus looks at you is different than the way he looks at people in the world. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. You have the authority of heaven itself. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead raised you up from your sin. Same spirit, not another spirit. There's not but one, that's the Holy Spirit. He raised Jesus, he raised you up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you look, if you will, in Romans chapter 8? You're close by. Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Okay. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. You see, this is the one of the things that separates you from the people of the world. You have the Spirit of Christ in you. Amen. Don't forget that. You have the Spirit of Christ in you. Amen. That separates you. That's what a Christian is, and that's what he has, and that's who he carries within him. Next verse. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Just a revelation from the word. The spirit of the Lord lives in you. The same spirit Jesus carried in his body, you're carrying now in your body. The same authority that he had from heaven, you have now. He gave that to you when he was resurrected from the dead. Can you say amen? amen? The purpose of the law is found in Romans chapter 3. I just want to read maybe one verse there. That'll be verse 19, Romans three nineteen. I like the book of Romans. Verse 19 says this. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those that are under the law. Hmm. That every mouth may be stopped, all the world may become guilty before God. The purpose of the law was to make you know you're a sinner. That's the purpose of the law. To recognize your need of a Savior. You'll never recognize your need of a Savior until you recognize the fact that you're a sinner. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The law was given to man to bring an end to himself. So you'll need a savior. Amen. So the law has worked. Amen. The law has done its job. It convicted you of sin. Showed you the need of a savior. And once you come to Jesus, you no longer need the law. Well, I just walk around and whistle a little bit, I think. Once you come to Jesus, you no longer need the law. The law was given to you for one purpose, to bring a conviction of sin, to show you you're a sinner, and to show you you need a Savior. Amen. So once you have recognized that I am a sinner, I need a Savior to be saved, you no longer need the law. The law has done its job. Amen. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. The law has done its job. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you're no longer under the law. That would be a revelation if the world that calls themselves Christians could really get a hold of that. You are no longer under the law. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's too big for somebody. Because you see, some of you are just like I was. When I came to the Lord at the age of 25, that was in 1968, I think. I didn't even own a Bible. I didn't even know the Bible stories that young people know today. I didn't know all the things you teach your children today. I didn't have a teacher in my family. I didn't have a Christian in my family. So at 25, I'm brand new. I have a lot of doubts. I have to deal with a lot of stuff. I'm trying to learn about who Jesus really is. I'm trying to learn who I'm my Savior. I knew I was a sinner. My wife told me that every day. <laughs> So I didn't have a problem knowing I was a sinner. But see, my problem was I couldn't get any help. God knows, I promised my wife, I lived with her five years as a sinner. I promised her everything in the book for those five years. I meant most of it. But hey, it just does not work if you are not saved. You can say what you want. You can say what you want to do. You can say about who you want to be. But I'm telling you, it just doesn't work if you are not saved. So what did the law do? The law convicted me of sin. The law showed me a savior. His name was Jesus. So when I trusted Jesus, I still had to learn how to work through things. So don't think you're going to know all this stuff that it took me 50 years to know. Blessed be the name of the Lord, but just pick it up as you can. The thing about what you don't want to do is to walk away from Jesus. Amen. I tell you, he's grabbed you. He's with you. He's working with you. He wants to help you. He wants to teach you. He wants to show you what, it, what it's like to be a Christian. So just be patient with him. Don't give up so quick. I'm going to tell you what. Jesus will never turn loose of you. Amen. I heard a good song last night that he doesn't turn loose of you. You know that song? Jesus never turns loose of you. I'll teach it to you tonight. Yeah. So the knowledge of sin. 
we miss the purpose of the law. It's not do, 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 do this, do that, do the yang, yang, yang. It's not the do. We don't, we're not do-do birds. <laughs> Jesus done it for us. If you can get a revelation of that and put a smile on your face, I'm telling you that right. Jesus has done all things for you and for me. Amen. So we're not doing this. He's done it. It's a done deal. Can you say amen? amen. I think the devils, and I think religion, mostly religion, because I don't like to brag about devils too much, but I think religion has kept people under the law and made them feel uncomfortable, made them feel condemned, made them feel guilty, made them feel like they're sinners and that God just doesn't much care for them. That's the work of religion. Religion has all its rules and regulations. Jesus does not have that. He has a relationship. You can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You can know him. You can talk to him every day. You can ask for his help. You can walk in his light. You can walk in the help that he gives you. Anything you need, God has provided it. That's what I want to say to you. So we're not sinners because we sin. We were sinners because of Adam. Can you get a hold of that? I've never heard anybody else tell me that, so let me tell you that again. We are sinners. We're sinners not because we sinned, but we sinned because of Adam. It was imputed to us. For we've all sinned, and we've all come short of the glory of God. That's why we need a Savior. But until you know you're a sinner, you won't know he won't need a Savior. Save you from what? Save me from a sinner. Now, this is the beauty of it. Adam brought sin in the earth. Adam brought sin into my life, if you want to believe the Adam story. He brought sin into your life. Well, see, Jesus didn't bring sin. He brought righteousness into your life. So I was a sinner because of Adam. But I'm righteous because of Jesus. And none of it has to do with me. That's why we come to church to learn this stuff. None of it has to do with me. It's all about him. I was a sinner because of Adam. I'm righteous because of Jesus. I like to swap myself. I'd rather be righteous than a sinner. Amen. How'd that go with you? I'll drink to that. Page two. Romans chapter eight. You close by. I'd like to read verse one, please. Be okay if I shout. Yeah. Be okay if I run a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Tried to get a boy to run with me this morning. I can feel it in me. I don't know about you. I can just feel it all over me. Amen. The presence of God is awesome, isn't it? Yeah. I felt his presence when y'all were singing this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now, 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 no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me read that verse again. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What's the purpose of the law? To convict you of sin and to bring death into your life. Unless you do everything God wants you to do. And there's nobody but me can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 3, please. For what the law could not do, and it was weak through the flesh, God did. 
hallelujah, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That's why we live under a new law. It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, there's a great difference in a man that's saved and a man that's not saved. It's more than just what you see in the natural. The man that's not saved is still a sinner under the law. The law will always make him to be a sinner. He'll never see himself as anything else. And the law will tell you every sin that you've ever committed and show you how wrong it is. But the man that's saved... He's no longer a sinner and he's never under the law. That's a simple thing, isn't it? The man that's not saved, he's a sinner, he's under the law. The man that's saved, he's not a sinner and he's not under the law. Blessed be the name of Jesus. You're destined by God to ring in life because Jesus is the Lord of your life. What are you ruling over? We said Jesus gave you his authority when he was resurrected from the dead. Well, what does that authority give you the power to do? The power to rule. What are you ruling over? What are you ruling over? Look at your life. <clears throat> Look how you're living. Look what's going on around you. And I ask you, what are you ruling over? Boy, I can feel the wheels turning. What are you ruling over? Amen. You're supposed to be ringing in life. As a king? Do you think sometime I'm preaching to Christians? Are you still a sinner? No. Are you still under sin? No. Do you have a savior? Yes. Do you have his authority? Yes. Did he tell you to rule in life? Yes. Well, what are you ruling over? I tell you what, there's a lot of you would be a lot further along the line if you'd listen to some things this preacher says. Amen. Don't listen to everything I say, but do listen to some of it. <laughs> I just wish I could get you out of that stuff. Uh, well... I'm just a sinner. You're not a sinner. You're a saint of God. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere in the writings of the church do you find yourself being called a sinner. You're always a saint. So why would you call yourself something the Bible doesn't call you? I believe some of you are going to get this, blessed be God, or I'm going to go over it to you to get it. There's no need to carry you to the throne Talk about seated at the right hand of Jesus if you can't get this settled. There are things you're going to have to rule over. That's why he lets you sit there at his right hand in heavenly places, as spiritually speaking, with all of his authority. There's a reason he has you there. First of all, you rule over sin. He has no part of my life. I'll never give an account to God. I'll never be punished for sin. My God. Don't pull my jacket off. I done got hot. Hallelujah. You'll never be punished for sin. S I N. Amen. Well, that's all you know. Well, do you know what double jeopardy is? What? Jesus Christ was punished in your stead. So it would be wrong for God to punish you for sin when he has already punished Jesus for sin. Do you understand that? You will never be punished for you. Well, you don't know what I've done. I don't care what you've done. I only know one thing. Because you do stupid things, you need a good Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And his name is Jesus. 
Will you say I can just do? No, I'm telling you, if the Spirit of God lives in you, you won't go do all that stuff. But if you do, you won't be punished for it. You can only get that at Christ the King. Because they'll line you up in these other places. I told you, I told you I wore the carpet out at Mount Perry and repent him. Because what he preached every Sunday, I'd done Monday through Friday. <laughs> so I come forward to get rid of it best I could. But see, I didn't know the cross. I didn't know the cross had taken care of all of that. I didn't know Jesus did all that for me. But you see, as I began to learn these things, the joy of the Lord came in me. You'll never find me a man that's mixing the law with grace that has joy. It's hard, man. You can't do it. It won't work. Oh, you okay with that? <laughs> so first of all, you rule over sin. How about the powers of darkness? Oh, booger, 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 booger. Yeah, we rule over those. There's a, how about depression? I said, how about depression? Yes. I have a psychiatrist with the VA. Well, you know, everybody over 70 is depressed and can't sleep. I don't, why don't you tell me something I don't know? But see, thank God for psychiatrists. They have their method of treating you. But you can rule over that yourself. Amen. I hear the wheels turning. Amen. Ying, 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 ying. Huh? What are you ruling over? Are you allowing this stuff to rule over you? Come on. Are you with me today? So we talk about we rule over sin. We rule over powers of darkness. We rule over... How about poverty? Well, we were the poorest folks in town when I came to the Lord. My wife said, you got to tithe your money to the church. Amen. I said, my God, we can't even get by now. How are we going to give 10% to the church? She convinced me that was the way to go. And I can tell you after 50 years of always tithing my money, my wife and I have never had a need that God didn't meet. Amen. Hallelujah. He takes care of me. I give more to the church now than I made when I first came to Shelby. My wife dropped $250 in the plate this morning. She does that every week. I give more to the Lord now than I was paid when I came to Shelby. Well, how much were you paid? Nothing. That'll make you believe God. This lady said, I'm going to pay you $250 this week. This lady right here is going to pay you $250 next week. And after that, you're on your own. Don't tell me that won't make you pray. But did you know? God always provided. Amen. He always provided. My wife talking the other day, she said, Honey, I can't believe we're living in the house that we live in. And it's paid for. She said, I can't believe that. I can't believe. She said, you know, I never thought when I married you, I'd live in something like that. Hmm? Because I had nothing. His old boy said, I didn't even have a pot to pee in. I had nothing. So she said, you know, when I came to you and, you know, fell in love with you, married you, I never thought I'd live in something like that. I said, surprise, surprise, surprise. God is good. Can you say amen? I could just stand here. I just sense the presence of God in this place. Hallelujah. 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 
Every curse I rule over. Every sickness and every disease I rule over. You mean it won't touch you? I didn't say it wouldn't touch you. I said you rule over it. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10, I'll end there this morning. Quickly, please. It's lunchtime right now. And down yonder at the upscale soul place, they're getting that chicken out right now. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. How can you tell it's good food when you bite that leg and grease runs out of both sides of your mouth? You're in a good place. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12. I heard my wife say, mm. Here we go. But this man, say this man. We're not talking about Adam now, we're talking about Jesus. This man. After he had offered one sacrifice for S-I-N-S. How many sacrifices did it take to take care of that? One. At the Mexican place, I'd say, oh no. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins, do you notice that other word that's in your Bible? Forever? Forever? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Why do you want to fuss at me about sin? If it's took care of, and I say you will not be punished for sin because you're not under sin, that means you're not under law. You've been freed from all that. Notice here, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, how long is that? Forever. Forever. Set down at the right hand of God. How many sacrifices? Forever. How long was it good for? Forever. What was the sacrifice for? Sins. sins. Do you notice we don't confess sins up here anymore? Amen. Before we do Holy Communion. Well, you tell me you don't sin? I want to read that verse to you again. I'm ending right here. I want to read that verse. Verse 12. After. But this man, after, he had offered one sacrifice for sins. One. That was himself. He who knew no sin became sin. Amen. Forever sat down at the right hand of God. From that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstools. For by one offering, for by one offering, we're not old covenant. We don't, we don't go to the priest and offer our sacrifices. We don't go to the priest and do our confessions. Hmm. Hit a little niche right there. We don't go to the priest and do our confessions. I'm going to say that again. We do not go to the priest for our confessions. I've been there and done that. For by one offering, he has, that's a bad word right there. Are you still awake? Amen. Am I boring you? I told you this is my last verse, so say that and wake up a minute. For... By one offering, he has perfected, hallelujah, he's perfected, how long? Forever. Glory be to God. I could go to the house on that. What has he done? He has perfected forever. I got to be careful. I get too loud, everything gets messed up or something. By one offering, he took care of sins. Amen. By one offering, he's perfected you. Amen. Why can't you just believe that? Why does that give you such a problem? 
Are you so bound up in sin that you can't believe that? Why can't you just believe you've been perfected? Well, God's still working on me. Oh, really? What is he doing? If he hasn't already perfected you, am I still on? If he hasn't already perfected you, what is he doing? How about you? Smart guy. How about you? What else do you have to do in your life to be perfected? Hmm? Boy, I could take you some places, but I'm not sure. You could stay there when I got you there. You're perfected. God's not punishing you for your sins. You are perfected. Doesn't mean you're mature. It means you're perfected. What verse was that? Huh? 14 where? Hebrews 10. 10 14. Can I read again? Yeah. Every priest standeth, and that's verse 11, for by one offering, please see this, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified sanctified or set aside. That's what happened to you when you got born again. You got saved. God set you aside. Amen. You are the perfected of God. I know we all have weaknesses. I know that. I know we miss God. We fail God. We do all kind of things. But hey, that's why Jesus came. Amen. That's why he died on a cross. He didn't go there for himself. He went there for you. Amen. Because he knew you and I were going to miss it. He knew we were sinners. He knew we needed him. Amen. And he knew if we got into him, everything's all right. Glory Amen. be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So stop depending upon your self-effort. Say self-effort. Self -effort. To earn and qualify for God's blessing in your life. We're not laboring to be blessed. We're already blessed. Amen. We're not laboring... To be blessed, we're already blessed. Yes. You're getting this? Yes. Are we okay? Yes. Is it okay to go get some soul food now? Yes. Huh? Hallelujah. I know where to get it if you want to go. Sure, huh? Are oh, you going down there? Yes, sir. Well, I'll probably see you down there. Right. Everything you ever need in this life will come through Jesus Christ. Amen. He died on a cross, not just for your sins. He died to perfect you. Amen. Well, Dad Gunnett, why didn't you preach me this years ago? Amen. Did they help me in my struggles? Are we okay today? Yes. He has perfected forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He has perfected by the cross and by his death. Those two little gifts, if you don't get them, you'll never ring in life. What's the first one? Abundance of grace. The second one? The gift of righteousness. I think next Lord's Day I want to talk to you about those two kinds of righteousness. There's a righteousness that you can build up and try to perform for yourself. The children of Israel did that. Yeah, good luck. But there's a righteousness that comes from God. So there's man-made righteousness, but there's godly righteousness. Amen. I'm going to choose to go God's way. Amen. Amen. So we don't judge people after the flesh. We don't look at people after the flesh. We don't know you just after the flesh. We know you by the Spirit. Amen. And there's a new law we're under now. It's not the law of Moses, but it's the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Please stand with me. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for just a couple of verses that opens our eyes to the understanding of who we really are in Christ Jesus. It's not by might. 
It's not by power, but Lord, it's by your spirit. We give you praise today for what Jesus has accomplished for us. We give you praise for our life. We give you thanksgiving that we are brand new creations in Christ. We thank you that you took our sins and we thank you on the cross you paid the price for all of those sins will never be punished for one sin. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because of righteousness we can stand in your presence anytime, anytime, anytime we can go into your presence because we have the righteousness of God abiding in us. And when you look at us and when you see us, you don't see us for who we are, but you see us in Christ. Hallelujah, you see us beyond the cross. You see us beyond Pentecost. You see us seated with your Christ in the heavenly places. So Lord, let your work be done in this place today. Help us have the ability to trust you for all of these wonderful things that we're talking about today. Would you just lift your hands to the Father in this place and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I receive. I receive. The abundance of grace. The abundance of grace. And the gift of righteousness. And the gift of righteousness. I receive this. I receive this. And I shall ring in life. I shall reign in life. Because of this revelation. Because of this revelation. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And, the Holy Spirit. and everybody said amen. amen. And amen and amen and amen. God is good. Give him praise with you. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website. Our Lord is building his kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for his kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org, and check us out on Facebook and YouTube.